<laughs> selected for whatever reason. All right. All right. Let's. I'm gonna do the music over again. So we'll just okay. start from there. You can't escape! You will be the one escaping! This is Flux to Pose, episode 259, recorded on April 24th, 2019, on the docket today. Lucas and I, we're going we're gonna to catch you up on, on things of our lives and all the fun stuff. What you playing featuring Mortal Kombat 11 and Katana Zero. Finally, we're going to close out the show with What's Around the Web and that awkward, sweet, sweet, awkward finish. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And please enjoy this show. Welcome to Flexbos. I am Jason Lacey. I am joined by my best friend, Mr. Lucas Rose. Hello. That was really fun holding that pose. That was fun. Oh, I thought I you it. just glitched. <laughs> I also like how your your name is screen capped Baba Is You. That's nice. <laughs> that's true. Haven't that's, played the game, but uh that's a nice touch. Thank you. I hear I'm that's an Adam nice Leonard. Touches. I hear that's a, an Adam Leonard X skinny Matt game. They both really like it. Both really Oh, now you don't want to play it ever, do you? Nope, no. Never, never, ever want to play it. Welcome to Flexibles. This is the podcast where we invite you to hang out with us. It's a slice of life. It's a slice of, uh, we pretend to be a gaming podcast. We pretend to be a craft beer podcast. And most of all, we just, you know, we're just pretend. here. Most we, we of all, pretend. we just pretend. We most, most of all, we do pretend. We're happy to have you here with us on this journey through the internet, through life, through whatever comes our way just whatever man just whatever. just whatever really i mean that's the vibe you know we you know we've always had a curated show a lot of content and lately we've just kind of been like yeah you know whatever we just kind of go with it almost aimless so to speak but you know i just uh, i don't feeling know it. you're feeling sometimes it's aimless. nice just to not sometimes it's nice not to have to to continue down a specific path now however i did enjoy last week's show having our gaming resolutions that was nice but that's that's when we'll the, when the moment strikes, you're like, ooh, but you can't force it. You can't force no, that's, talent. That's true. Of this that's magnitude. True. My God, I don't have the chat popped out, so I can't say hello Jesus. to awesome people like Dude Arena. Four, two, seven. What's up, dude? I would like to say we would love to have you join us on Discord. That is flexibles.com slash Discord. That'll get you in to the hotness. I mean, if you thought, you know, I, I, I've liked this once a week journey through Flux, I suppose, but how can I experience just bullshit every day? Right there, Discord. I mean, we got your we, bullshit you, co covered. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn about gifts, colored gifts. You're going to learn about indiscriminate nature. I mean, a lot of, a lot of things. You're going to get educated. <laughs> I mean, we're teaching Calo the American language. In slang, it's great. It's a good time. You don't want to miss it. You can support the show over on Patreon. We'll we'll share those links later. We are a humble partner. Again, if you go to Discord, there's links to how we can get some great deals on some games. And I mean, it's good for us. It's good for us all the same way. And I have to remind you guys, we have just two more weeks remaining. So next week's show is the April giveaway. We have three physical items: the Cuphead mug, the Mario Prince, the digital album menu. You have to enter, so make sure you check the show notes for those details. Patrons, we might, uh, I'm not going to, I'm not saying we'll have you hooked up, but we probably have you hooked up. Just going to put wink. that out there. Just putting that out there. But, but the rest of you fools, make sure you enter at uh, those show notes. There's a little Google Doc, a little Google form you need to fill out. Well, we got four entries right now, so I mean, the odds are looking pretty good. The in odds your are favor. ever in your favor. <laughs> And I have we have another giveaway because we got a, a listener, Dan. Dan Anthony, you might have heard of him because he's a pretty awesome dude. He's been supporting us and the show for a long time. He's a great guy, uh, active on a lot of different communities and just an all-around cool dude. 
he has a giveaway that he wanted to say, hey, you dudes, either you can have it or you can give it away. And I'm like, well, I'm never going to use it. But I wanted to give it away anyway. And he chose us of all the different communities or other content creators. He chose us to give this to, to give it away. He has, thank you, Dan, once again. This is a code. And how this is going to work, the first person that reaches out to us and says, hey, I want it, you're going to get it. That's how I'm going to make this work. So if you're watching live and you want it, I guess you got the advantage. Oh, shit. However, this is a code. It's for PC only. So that's going to probably limit. This is for Apex Legends, 6,700 coins on uh, Origin. So I'm assuming, I haven't played Apex, so I'm guessing the coins is what you use to buy your uh, cosmetics. Cosmetics. Stuff of that skins. nature unlocks. So these are 6,700 6, coins. And for those who are unfamiliar, this is a $59.99 value. So, I mean... That's a pretty big deal. So that's really that's generous true. of Dan. I thank you for giving that out. He did some playtesting for EA, and that's how uh, that's how we got that. So he worked hard for the money. He worked hard. So the first person reaches out to me or Flexibles and says, "Hey, I want that code. It's yours. It's there for the taking. That's where we're gonna do this giveaway." So congratulations to the uh, the future winner. Sixty seven hundred coins, Apex Legends, PC only. I there only collect coins in Mario. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and the last bit of housekeeping for you all, Netflixation. We are doing that next week as well. We did the poll. How it ends is our winner. So please, if you want to join in, watch that before next week. We'll be watching it, and we'll talk about it on the next show. That reminds me, we've, we've had some chatter. We need to get the next watch along on the books. Yeah, well, I it's pro- the first. I proclaim that. It's usually it was going to be the first Monday of every month. Oh, that's how we're doing it. It's like we've talked about this before and decided on it, and then I just forget. Well, about it. and then we moved it last time because I was like, I want to watch it. And then we tried to do it again, and somebody else, nobody else, could make it. And then we moved it again, and then we watched it, and it was gr- great. It was great. It was great. It was wonderful. That was Mac and me. Samurai Cop and Mac and me have been uh, legendary. Legendary. Miami connection. Don't forget Miami. I, connection. You weren't there that for that one. one though. I need to. Yeah. <laughs> only, only it's like, I'm going to go back and watch it and I'm just going to scroll through the discord chat slowly as I watch it. And just go, mm, wasn't there. I had a joke for that moment. But... <laughs> it could have been me. So that, that is the housekeeping. Welcome to the show. Let's start off. Lucas. Yeah. We weren't able to do the show last night. You had a little, I don't want to say it was a scare, but it was I mean, a bit of had, a moment. You, you had a moment. Enlighten the people. There was concern through the community. People wanted to make sure. I, I alerted uh, Dude427, who was watching the stream. Cause he's the only one that comes. Thank you for coming, dude. <laughs> I alerted him. I alerted him to the concern. But, Sir. But people, and people that aren't on our Discord, because you you popped it in there as well. Let's let's catch people up to speed. This is IRL. Let's just go into it. Get you caught up on our lives. Let's you know. get into it. All right. Well, so what happened was my wife was, my wife was feeling, um, you're welcome, was feeling some contractions most of the day. And long story short, we basically ended up in the hospital again because she was having, uh, like I said, contractions all day. And they got um, closer and closer together for a little bit longer, a little bit longer each time. She came home. I said, well, you really shouldn't be working. You should be at home resting. (laughs) And she's like, okay, we'll come home and. Uh, so she laid down on the, the bed. Now here's the kicker. I had to go get groceries. So I made dinner and then I left to go get groceries. I said, and she, she was like, well, hurry back. I'm really not feeling well. That was when I was out. Uh, and I had to stop by the library too. So I was going to be gone for at least an hour, if not more. And so I'm rushing around getting groceries, running over to the to the library and I get home and she's like, should we call or, sh- or should we go in? And I'm like, well, let's try calling. Is there a number? Here's the funny part. They don't give you a number. There's like nobody to call. You can't call the doctor after they leave. There's, I tried calling the triage uh, where we went or where we go to. Nobody yeah, picks yeah. up. Nobody picks up. Just that's useful. Rings forever. So we I was like, well, better to be safe than sorry. So we go to triage. But this doesn't happen in that fabled healthcare of Canada that Sean Capri always talks about. Oh, they have people manning the phones at all moments of the day. It's like a telethon, right? right? I hope so. <laughs> well, that would have probably helped us because we, basically, waiting for the dog sleds to bring people in. 
<laughs> bring in the medicine like Balto uh, for the poor children. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. There's a, there's a deep cut right yes, there. Yes. Yes. Uh, I had to say the name cause I wasn't sure if you'd get the reference or anybody else for that matter. Um, so we, we go to the hospital and basically they were painful for her, but they said, no, everything's fine. Again, the, uh, the, the dilation was not there. So they sent us home and that was that. So hmm. kind of, uh, well, that just happened type thing. What do you do? I was, I was a little bit grumpy because I, I will admit, because I just got done getting groceries and everything and it's like, yeah. all right, well, time to pack the car. Well, well I got to get all the well, groceries put I mean, away. And and you don't want to, I mean, but at the same time you're like, I get it. And then it's like, you can't, uh, it's like a catch 22. Yeah. Know, uh, it's like. frustrating. Cause she doesn't know there, there's no clear right. answer. And I don't know. Clearly, I've never been. And, pregnant, and you're like, so. uh, you've done this before, shouldn't you know? Yeah, I was. Admittedly, I mean, I was just like, I guess, I guess we're gonna go to the hospital. Then maybe not that bad, but pretty close. Fine, but, I'll pay another hospital entrance fee. Great. What I was. I, what am I? What am I made of money? <laughs> I was joking to her it, when we decided to walk around uh, after the fact, like after I lightened up a little bit, and I was like, Yeah. Well, at least I wasn't like. What the hell? Didn't you know I had a I had a podcast to do tonight? Now what am I supposed to do? Gosh, you're not even gonna have the kid, you know? And she laughed. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was a bit of a scare, but everything's fine. Baby's fine. Everything's good. So, like I said, it was more of a better that to be safe than sorry, you know. So, what are you gonna do? You're not gonna. Uh, the doctor made a good point, and she said, "Well, the good news is your baby's not just gonna fly out. Babies don't just, you know." It takes labor takes a long time. Giving birth takes a long time. So it's not like we're not going to make it to the hospital, you know. So next time we'll probably have to wait. I said next time we're going to wait like 24 hours. Unless you're. I had, a, I had a coworker that this is his third child, second with his current wife. And I think he waited. I, I, he must have just told her like, nope, we're not going in until such and such time. They went in. I think they were in the hospital like Five two minutes. hours. Had the baby, went home the next day. Oh, I feel sorry for Done. her because that must have been painful. I mean, there's nothing you can do, but it is painful having contractions and all that stuff. But, yeah, that would be nice. Pop a baby out real quick and then go home. I don't know. Act like nothing happened. So Whatever. Just uh, add it to the, the rest. We didn't of do it. Uh, it that was pile. not my experience either. So Yeah. Well, man can dream. Well. Man can dream. Uh, yeah, so that's True. why we are doing it on Wednesday instead of Tuesday. Uh, I guess I'll go into my other stuff really quick, but first I want to, I, I have one in here called cart fucker. I had to write this. Yeah, I got to ask about this. I was running into, well, we were going into Walmart and I hate Walmart, but we had to go here to get stuff for Danette's room for, cause she's a teacher. So we don't want to spend a lot of money. We go to Walmart and of course I'm not going to let her go alone anymore. That's for damn sure. Yeah. No. So, uh, um, was there anyone, was there any random, was like a woman causing a scene doing karate and was there a man, her son getting I, naked and, and assaulting um, no, stuffed animals? No dogs uh, stealing no beef dogs jerky were, or whatever, no, or cornbread no, mix. No. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, no, but that would have been so, great. So Calo brings a good point. When you go through uh, Walmart, do you just stop through like the cleaning aisle and pick up a broom? So then you have a defense item. So I feel item? safe. Yeah. Uh, no, but I should. That's actually a pretty good, that's actually a pretty good uh, idea. Hey, that's another T-shirt idea. Uh, flex to post self defense class, and he can be <laughs> a broom. broom, just a yeah. karate master with a broom. Somehow, I like these to be like flex to post dojo, bow to your sensei, and flex you know, to dojo. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I'll get on that. Yeah, add that to the list. Add that to the other pile, not the baby pile, the T-shirt pile. Yeah. Um. So as we were walking in there, I um, I noticed something. Well, first of all, what I what I witnessed was a cart a cart rolling towards a uh car and smashing into the door and then okay, after like it, I, at, like just like casual rolling down the hill or in, casual in parking like, spots like, like like wind blowing at speed or like someone deliberately gave like, this thing a run and let go no no not deliberate like it just ran off by itself for sure okay no question okay, okay. um okay. then i see this sheepish ki- sheepish kid come running after it and look around like did anybody see what just happened and then bring the cart 
back around, like back to wherever it went rolling away from. So I'm just mm-hmm. like, what the hell? And so then we drive by and I see, th- I I'm showing Jason if it'll, if it'll show up. I see this. I don't think it's going to work. Oh, oh, okay. Tap so the screen once and right here. I can see. Okay. There yeah, yeah. Oh, there, there we go. Right. Okay. Perfect. So there's these so there's carts, carts in the middle of parking spots. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with people? Take there right next to this two parking spots down is a fucking cart corral. Have you ever, okay? have you ever been to have you ever been to Costco? No. It's even worse. And their carts are even bigger. Gah. What is wrong? Who are these people who can't who are like, you know what? I can't be bothered. That's Reno says it. That's Walmart. That I is mean. Walmart. And that's why I don't go there. I hate it. Did I did I ever I mean this is I don't think I ever told the story. Did I tell the story about the email I had to send at work? No, I don't think so. Doesn't so sound familiar. People of the show, you know, we recently moved office. Uh, so we had this nice new uh, office that I'm in now that well, it was it's, nice. Ni- it's nice. So I'd like to take care of it. And you notice just like people are lazy, first of all. Um, generally, the people, some of the people you work with sometimes can be terrible human beings. But like just they like shit all over the bathroom. Root- <laughs> yeah, that was at the old office. Like routinely leave up all their dirty coffee mugs in the sink. It's like we have a dishwasher. Put them in the dishwasher. Yeah, we had this problem at so, Compass. Nobody did. So it's just all this crap like that. But all of a sudden, like I go in the bathroom the one day, and I happen to walk by the first stall, and I noticed there's just this bunch of there's like toilet paper all over the floor, and then finally I was like, "That's it, I'm done. I've had enough." And I don't usually speak up a lot. Like this is what my wife always says. I don't always speak up often, so I feel like when I do, it really resonates because then people know I'm like, "Yeah, you're quiet. Either you're quiet, I'm Dad. upset about it." So I like send out this email. I purposely I send it, I hit the everyone button and then I go through and delete all the females from the office. So it's only going out to the men. And I'm like, we could I'm like we need to be better than this. I'm like this is a I'm like I don't know who left your crusty TP install <laughs> one because that's the thing. It's like someone was like I don't know what they did if they blew it and they just threw it on the floor and you're like you're literally like arms reach from the toilet you're sitting on. Put it in there, you know. So did, I'm like I don't yeah. know who left your your crusty TP in this bathroom, but I'm not your mom. I'm not your dad. Clean yeah. up after yourselves. Yeah. You know, and it's have like, so that's pride. the thing. It's like, or it's just like, every time I go, like we have a lot of disposable silverware that we keep in the one silverware drawer. I can't tell you how many times I go to like, Hey, I'm going to get a spoon out and there's no spoons. So it's like, if you take the last one, go to the cabin underneath and replenish. That's all I ask. So that's what, that's what I'm saying is people are lazy. It's People true. will do the status quo or the bare minimum as much as possible. That's the point I'm trying to make here. Well, this so, is hey, what... fuck faces. Yeah. Clean up yeah. after yourself. Move your carts. Move your motherfucking carts. Gosh. It ran... It hit somebody's car. That person's going to have a bad day. They're going to walk out to their car and they're going to go, what the hell? Oh, my God. That's why I, uh, that's why I like try to think like karma in those type of situations yeah maybe that person left their car <laughs> do its thing you know and the universe will sort itself out but we need to make self self returning carts screw self-driving cars that's not a problem <laughs> self hey, carts. let's get some self-driving <laughs> carts up in here exactly come on or just do all make do what all he does Aldi make way? them 25 mm-hmm. cents and then people they there aren't any carts out there people give me their carts for free sometimes it's usually elderly people, but they're like, yeah. here, no, it's fine. Yeah, and you go, I'll go to court. No, no, you keep it. Son. No, keep, keep it. it. Buy yourself keep a it. lollipop keep when it. you're inside. <laughs> they don't sell lollipops. Uh, those cost 75 cents now. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm just going to throw this Remember when you're, like, you're a kid and if you got a quarter, you're like, hell yes, because I'm going to be able to go to the arcade now at the movie theater and yeah. play a game. Yeah. Now, like, what does an arcade the game even cost now? Like A, a dollar, 50? probably. A dollar $1. 50. Five? Probably not even money. You probably have probably to get not even, Yeah, exactly. Not even money anymore. Now you got to get... That's going to take 18 tokens. Ugh. And it doesn't matter how good you are. You only get two minutes and 50 seconds of playtime. We need to um, switch to a token economy. Ooh. Uh, crypto? No. A de- that's a decentralized. Ooh. Don't ask me anything about, else about it. But I know that. And I also know this. Uh, so yeah, that was my cart story. Just, it, okay. I, I get, uh, I wasn't, I get I wasn't so sure if we were going to go like the route of like maybe the fruit fucker from Penny no, Arcade. No, no, that would have been. When you, when, you, when you said, when I looked at the show notes, I see cart fucker. 
I mean, well, the little kid was a, a fucker. I mean, this is flexible. So my mind goes to a variety of places. Right. I mean, were these people having sex with a shopping cart as a, a, an you, implement? I think you were was, hoping. Was this was this a man having a sex act with a cart? Right. I mean, there's well, straps. There's, I mean, there's there's things there. There are play, a lot. There's you know? seats. There's hinges. There's folding things. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of avenues. Yeah. No, see that's that just speaks yeah. to the functionality of the word fuck, which is it has so many meanings. It's the most one of the most useful words in the English language. It's the jackknife of words. That's what I say. I think it's the sham wow of words. Wow, because it cleans up. Yep. And you can just ring it out <laughs> and continue. Yeah. Just ring one out real quick. All right. Uh, so, anyways, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this other stuff, but uh, I did get a new graphics card. I said it's time. It's time. I need I need 4K in my life. Six You've had friends. like three upgrades, and I've been milking this this rig for like all I can. Well, I I uh, you know I You're go like I got work. a graphics card. I'm like, yeah, I got a new case fan. Let's just say, it's sweet. I'll be pay- I'll be paying for it over the course of like six months or something. So, hey. but you know, I, I, I work hard for the money until the company took your your job away. Mm. Thanks no, a lot. No, that, that was that was. Thanks a lot, the... Lindsay. <laughs> yeah, come on, Lindsay. I know you listen. Yeah, Grave Texan. I know your internet names too. Call oh, you out. crap! I'm gonna find you on Twitter. And I'm gonna say sassy words at you. Um, so yeah, I just uh, I decided it was time to upgrade a bit because another thing was this other card I had runs pretty warm and it's a power hog, and yeah. quite frankly, I just. I don't know. It was time to move on. Now I did. How I many, how many steps? Like, what are we talking? Like, if your video old card was here. How many steps up are we saying is your new card? Well, like, if a 1080 Ti or a 2080 is the tip top. I'll be honest. I don't even know how good those are. Okay, I guess those, those are, are good, probably right? the top. A 2080, a Radeon 7, which looks like Final Fantasy 7 because it's not just a 7. Mm. Uh, and then like a 1080 Ti. This is probably more like a 1660 Ti or a, so like twice as good as my 970. It's about one step. It's halfway step. It's a step between uh, what I used to have and the the top tier echelon five hundred dollar to one thousand dollar card. Okay. Okay. So what was uh how much what was the, would you get the shell out for like two fifty three hundred no no or three hundred yeah sorry I thought you said five hundred for a second for some oh. reason no no three hundred which was about how much I, think, I paid for my I, other one I think that's like my ceiling for video cards yeah I don't think because I always feel like if you can go to three fifty you're probably not going to see a big enough gain for over what you would spend at three hundred right but I feel right. like if you're spending like less than two fifty you're kind of really you're that's where the yourself. that's where the value to to price or whatever value to performance ratio really is yeah. good where you get those 150 to 250 cards. Would you say like you can have like, it's what do you think it's more important to like, cause I feel like you can get a lot more variance in pricing and performance with a CPU, but I feel like with a video card, you kind of, you need to, I feel like your, your payoff for your investment is, you're going to have more gains from the video card, I feel like, almost than the CPU sometimes. Yeah. Well, I've heard basically take your budget and make 50% of it. If you're a gamer, make 50% of it your video card budget. That's what I've heard. So if that helps you at all, wow. then. So if wow. you say, I got $1,000. That, that, like, that means I got to buy a $400 video card. Yeah, that's what you're telling <laughs> exactly. Me. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Well, and this isn't, I mean, I didn't go latest and greatest, and this isn't no, going to run everything in 4K. Uh, did you get something that has that has a? Uh, sorry, I keep asking all these questions. No, real. Did you get something that has to have a rebate? No, You're like no. I'm gonna mail that in, and then you never do. No, no, I went with Amazon on this one and used my card to get points back. So, no, 100%. I, I didn't want to have to deal with. Uh, or did you finance limits. it? I did not finance it. Oh, so okay. I just used my star card and mm. got the points back. <laughs> so. Giddy. Yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's okay. There are some quirks with it. Uh, it does make no. There's like this thing called. I hear, the, I hear the division runs great on your TV with well, it. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, well, that's that gets into my other point. It, uh, the the fun I've been having with trying to get this thing to work with my 
TV, which is 4K HDR. Ugh, it's been a real problem. And what I've learned, basically what I've learned is that, and I was talking a little bit about this in the in the Discord, is, well, if you have like an Xbox or something like that, for the most part, this is all automa- automatic. There's nothing that you need to really do on your end. Uh, but through the computer, you have to set these things called like chroma, uh, what do they call it? Chroma subsampling. And it all controls like color depth and bit depth and all this other stuff and resolution and frames per second all account for what eats up your bandwidth on an HDMI cord. So an an HDMI cord and I think the plugs, depending on what what they're uh, what standard they're using, basically puts out 18 gigs per second. But if you try to do 4K at 60 frames per second with HDR and no um, color compression, basically, which is chroma subsampling, color compression, you're you're going over that bandwidth, which means you're going to get cutouts and, and all sorts of problems. Now, I thought the new cable that I bought that was longer so that I didn't have to, um, I was like chaining two, two cables together and all this other crap. Uh, so I bought this new cable and I thought it wasn't working. And then I found this out that they're only rated for this much bandwidth and you can easily go over because this isn't a problem for movies because they run at 30 frames per second or really 24, but you know, so it's not a problem except for 4k gaming really. Uh, so there's some compromises you have to do like color compression or lowering the frame rate or lowering the resolution. So it's a real pain in the ass, basically, is what I'm saying. And then HDR doesn't seem to be working to get anyway. Back <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Well, on my on my regular 1080p monitor, everything works fine, no problem. Not really, anyway. But yeah, ugh, I don't know. It's been a it's been a pain in the ass, but I love troubleshooting, so it's it's really cool. Yeah, right. right. Uh, and you got it. And lastly, you got you got a new phone. I did. I did. I got another Y phone special. This one comes from China, which is great. It's called the Huawei. Hu- 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 I mean, I got the, my one. Hu- 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 is it one plus? Are those Chinese or is that Indian? Made? I think one plus was made in China. Well, don't tell Donald Trump that because he'll be upset that you bought it. Um, so, yeah, found it in China. Well, I had an Asus before, so I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> look up Asus. I don't I don't even know. Um, I've used a lot of Asus stuff. Oh you know, yeah, I have a uh, I have an Asus monitor right here. Um Mobos, um laptops, Acer. Yep, yep, yep. Asus, a lot of all Acer, that stuff. Asus. MSI. Isn't it weird though when like product a company that's always made like either like monitors or motherboards and all of a sudden they're like yeah we make phones we make laptops yeah, it's a little you know, you're like you're worried weird. yeah hmm. get a little worried um so i i upgraded from an asus zen phone and i'm not a phone guy this is what i realized i will him and haw about getting a phone forever and this is why i i think i have it nailed down with a graphics card i can just look at the numbers and understand this is the performance that you're going to get it's not you don't have to worry about how you're going to use this device. You just install it and there you go. It does the thing that you bought it for or it doesn't yeah. just depending on what you're looking for with a phone. You have to worry about how does the operating system run? What, what operating system is it? How are the buttons? What does the screen look like? What's the camera performance? The, all of this stuff. Does it mm-hmm. y- use USB C or USB micro all sorts of stuff. How fast does it charge? What's the battery life like? I hate it. I don't like it because I get stuck in this. What if I make the wrong decision? You know, what if I get this phone and I hate it and I can't stand it? And it's a valid it, argument. It makes me freeze. Like, I don't want to order anything because I'm worried. I'm scared. I'm scared. I mean, I went through that, like, with the OnePlus, I was like, I wanted, like, kind of performance. But now it's like... I mean, I got I when I went back to an iPhone, I went, got a seven, which was two generations behind. Because now it's like I, I just don't with phones. I know there's some people that like have to have the you know the best thing out there. And they need that latest and greatest thing, and it's like I just don't care. 
anymore. I don't play games on my phone, first of all. Yeah. I mean, I'll download, like, just like uh, every time Nintendo releases something on the smartphone, I'll download and check it out, and then I'm done, like, two weeks later. I'm sure the same thing's going to happen with Mario Kart Tour, <laughs> whenever that comes out. Yeah. But, I mean, what do I use my phone for? Uh, Twitter and Discord. Porn. I mean, that's the huge thing. And email. I mean, I do a lot of work stuff in email on there, but, I mean, it's just like, I just don't care anymore. And It's not my main... I have a computer. I have a laptop. Yeah. You know, I don't need, I don't really need a phone to do much other than, I mean, I do stuff on it. I do check right. things. So I need, I need to be able to text and I have and, my calendar. And be, I mean, basic everyday thing. I don't, I don't need it. 15 megapixel camera. I need to, to be, yeah, I do see that. I, I wanted to make sure that the camera was good because that's my main way of taking pictures. Because oh, the I workout selfies. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that too. That too. Those are the most important. What kind of selfie camera and features do we got? Yeah. Um, and I need to be able to Google, you know, how many two sp- teaspoons are in a cup? Hey, Google. Hey, Google. How many teaspoons Google. are in a cup? Google, Google goggles. Yeah, exactly. So navigation. I, Tom Starr brings up navigation. Yeah, I do use that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Navigation. That's true. I I'm actually, using that tomorrow. I got this nifty case. It's a little nifty case right here uh, for this. Now, I got the Huawei. Or What's the thing on Huawei. the back? I'm what's gonna that get... Tony Star- what's that Tony Stark button on I'm, the back? I'm glad you asked, sir. <laughs> I sound like uh Doug Funny's neighbor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, hi <laughs> <are you> there, Doug. <laughs> Douglas. Um, Douglas. So this is a ring that you put around your finger. Now, I used to make fun of Danette for having this, but this thing is fucking awesome. Like seriously. It's I, I won't great. ever drop it into the computer ever again. Exactly goes flying off my hand and smashes my camera. Um, so it rotates so you can have it in any position. And I've actually, sometimes I'll watch so something and I just has hold- a cock ring on it. Very interesting. This is way too big for my cock. Are you kidding me? And then the other thing, the center part, this is the part that got me. I was like, okay, I'm in, this is a magnet for, if you have a car, hold, like a holder thing. Mm. So I don't Those are nice. Ha- yeah. I had to, ha- I had to have a separate one. That I put does in yours, my uh, case before. Does it do wireless charging? My phone? No. Yeah. I don't even think that's, it has NFC, honestly. That's the one thing cool. I'd like to, like, that's what I do. I like, I like using Apple Pay, but I wish I did have wireless charging on this because I'm always worried, like, especially how often you'd be putting headphones in and out, especially with this, with iPhone, with the only have the, you know, the the lightning port. So your, your headphones, you're charging, you're constantly shoving something in and out of that one jack. Oh, and like, yeah, once it, how, you know what so like is that going to cause an issue is that going to uh, you know shorten the lifespan of my device right type of thing that's true that's true which is why which is why i'm glad i switched to using uh uh pocket cast the web version because I, i'm not using my phone at all during the day for any audio you know well look at you that's what yeah. happens when you don't have a separate headphone jack for your but uh, no, they did away. Well, you know how many times I, when I go to bed at night, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to listen to something first. But it's like, oh, I can't do that because I have to have an adapter if I want to be able to charge my phone and listen to music at the same time. It's like they got together with a Nintendo and said. Yes. Here, <laughs> you need this squid-shaped amplifier and cables yes. to connect this to here. And then you need to route it over to this device and then into your headphones. And it's only going to work. And then 60% of the time, it'll work every time. Ooh, I like it. But yeah, this is basically the Honor 7X or the... Uh, oh, I just realized... It... Ooh, yeah. I still yeah, have this on there. there. So what, the what's, what, was the, what was the transition progress? Prog- blah, Clean start. Process like? Was Clean it start. Like... I didn't... Uh, I, well, okay. I didn't... On my last phone, I used my Google to reinstall all my apps and everything. On this one, I just put my – it asked me what my Gmail and everything was, so I loaded that account yeah. on there. But I said I want a clean start because I have yeah. apps on there that I barely use and all this well, other shit. Well, like, I feel like the phones are a lot easier now too. Like, I mean, yeah, with Apple, there's a bunch of apps and I can do that. But, I mean, for the most part, everything syncs to the cloud anyway. Like all my pictures, Google Photo. That takes yep, care of that. Yep. I don't have to worry about pictures. Or uh, now I have Amazon Photo too, just because they said, "Hey, we'll give you ten bucks if you use it." I was like, "Okay, I will use your program." But I mean, <laughs> other than that, what else is going to be on a phone that I need? You know, there's nothing else 
on the actual device. You know, I don't have music on my, you know, nothing stored on the phone anymore. Yeah, pictures I feel true. like were always the big thing, but now I, I, you know, I just I don't feel like I don't think switching devices is a really big deal anymore. That's just like point. if I I'm thinking about when I do when I do this possible PC build out. You know, I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm going to buy. I have a 250 solid state drive now, and then I have a you know uh, a terabyte of uh, SATA. So when I get the new one, I'm probably going to move over probably everything. Maybe I don't know. I don't. Even, I don't feel a reason to keep this old PC up and running at some point. But I'll probably get at least another 500 gig of of a a solid state drive. And then it's like, well, do I need to move stuff over? Am I going to lose anything here? And I'm thinking, well, I guess I have some documents, like some tax stuff I want to keep. But I feel like it's nothing I can't just throw into like Google Drive or Box Sync or, yeah. or any of those online repositories and, and get stuff over. But where in years and years ago, it's like, well, I don't, I don't, I don't keep my games and my music. But now it's like, I just, yeah. Well, I just download if the games have cloud saves, great. Otherwise, I don't really care. You know? That's true. That's a that's a holdover from pirating, I feel like. Because yeah. now back then it was like, Well, I got all this stuff I pirated and I can't right. I don't want to have to re download it, but now it's right. like, Oh, I can just go on Steam. Yeah. It already has just, all my saved I, games on there. Yeah, I just feel like there's it's not a really big deal. Except for me now it's like, Well, I gotta get my my task bar with all the icons how I like it. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it's true. I feel like as technology's come along, that whole process uh, has really been simplified. Well, that's because they they want to keep you in that ecosystem. Because if you yeah. stay in the ecosystem, they make it a lot easier. But if I were to switch to an iPhone, ugh, that would have well, Even though I have an iPhone, I'm still, uh, even though I don't really want to be, I'm still a very heavy Google user. I mean, I still use my Google account. I still use Gmail. I still use Google Drive. I still use Google Maps. I still use Google Calendar. You know, it's just because they work better. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. heard about the Google, the Google map or the Apple Maps. We all heard I about it was the Apple terrible maps. when it first came out. Yep, I'm sure it's fine now, but it's too late. Yeah, sure, it's, it's fine now, late. but well, it, it used to always use Waze, but now didn't Google buy Waze anyway? And I have so never heard of like, that actually. Waze was a cool app. It was really cool. It was uh, it was basically a, it was a you know a navigation device, but it was also they uh. It was user like user curated, you know. So it like real time as people are driving, you could report um, police officers that they saw on the longer route construction, and then oh, it would update, yeah, yeah. based on what other users were experiencing, it would update construction and things of like that. And you could like you would see other ways users on your map. You'd have a unique icon, and oh, you as God, you use creepy. the map and re- use the app and um, reported things, you'd get points, and you get like I had like you upgrade from like you had a sword or a sword and a shield and a crown and all this stuff. So it was pretty cool. But now I hear it sucks. So I cause, did they cause typical Google buy it and then they stripped it down and then it just sucks. Could you report, um, cops? Yeah. <laughs> hey, there's a prig police officers hill. or if there was like objects in the, in a blocking a lane or a car's broken down, all sorts of stuff like that. Sounds like a lot of driving and texting. <laughs> well, uh, they did have, um, they did try to, well, their workaround with that is if you try to do things while they detected, you know, the cop, your car was in motion, it would pop uh-huh. up and say, oh, but then you'd say, oh, I'm the passenger and you could override it. But I mean, right. that's, that's, they try. Covering them. that's covering them for any like legality. If you crashed your car while doing it, it was like, well, this is, you know, we, we don't want users to do it while driving. But it was, it was cool. And it would detect, like it would detect if you were going slow and it was like, oh, are you in a, in a traffic delay, and it was it's was, it was pretty interesting. It was oh, interesting. That, that is cool. Then you can yeah. just say yes, and it auto yep. reports. Yep. Well, or like, if, or if it detected, like, let's say they said it was a car broken down, and, you, and as you got to it, you would say, hey, "Is that car still there?" And you can, you know, do that. Yeah, <laughs> top server makes a good point. We need e- an emote here in the Twitch. We need a lot of emotes in Twitch, but I just, I think last time I tried to import them from Discord, they weren't the right size, and I was too lazy to try to convert them. Plus, they want them to all be square, which is kind of a pain because not all of our, our emotes are a perfect well, square. But it's hip to be square. Uh, I'll tell you what. If uh, we get to uh, $150 a month on Patreon, we will get uh, proper emotes in the Fluxtapose uh, Jason Twitch will get chat. off his ass and make all them emotes square. I, tell you I mean, I can't do anything else to contribute. I have to, I have to flex on Lucas to do everything. So at least I can make emojis. I mean, that's about all I can do. Hey, uh, Lucas, did you? 
it. Do you have a chance to uh, get those coasters done yet? <laughs> why do I talk? Why did I be? Why am I Michael? Uh, I mean, you could be. I mean, I sound like Michael. Yeah, why, why do I I'm going like to need Michael? you to come in on Saturday. Um, guys, 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 guys. You got to talk with your hands a lot if you're going to say guys. Guys. Use guys. Katie said no. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, this just got really personal and really stupid for everyone else listening. I, yeah, pretty much. I'm done. I'm done. You're done? Yeah. Okay. I, I like my, my phone. My Basically, it came down to, I like my phone. It was. It's a pretty good experience, actually, for 200 bucks. basically. I don't well, well Lucas, I'm going to show you the bane of my, cur- my current personal experience. Listeners at home, you can pretend to follow along. This is, in my hands, I'm holding my left Joy-Con. Now, also, this is the one that I dropped last summer. And as you can see, Lucas, there's a little battle damage there. Not much. I do. I mean, got a little crack there, but really not too bad for falling. Um, but all of a sudden now, this, this Joy-Con is not usable. I cannot use it at all because uh, it just randomly drifts now. Like, I got the long, I got the, drift? the much uh, reported ghosting drifting that we get um from the launch joy-con where like oh i'm trying to play breath of the wild but link's just running forward on his own yep that happens like i'll try to play at first i thought like when i was playing tetris 99 it was wigging out and trying to just randomly find me an opponent to drop on no it was just my my thumbstick randomly ghosting and just (laughs) constantly scrolling for an opponent so um it used if i could like if you would just jam in a direction it would reset it and then it would work fine but then I the other day I was like, oh, let's go into the calibration and see what's happening. And you can just literally see the thumbstick just go slowly drift forward or you'll move it and then it <laughs> doesn't go back. And so it's just unresponsive and crazy. So I did some Googling and then it's like, oh, use some use some compressed air. And I was like, OK, so I pry open this little part and I blast it with some compressed air. The rest of the day, it worked great. Did you get a little but for then, yourself? Yeah. No, actually, I have a. I, I saw it on Indiegogo. I have a little motorized compressed air gun that I use at work that's rechargeable. Oh, that's nice. But how do you yeah. get high off? It's called the, the it's called the Hurricane. <laughs> Ooh. So Hurricane. it's uh yeah it's it's effed um because literally like by Saturday I did this on a Friday by Saturday it was drifting again so it either drifts or just has constant phantom um, inputs that aren't there so it's it's pretty much impossible to play using. So well, I feel that way about them anyway. So, yeah, I mean, I hate them anyway. So th- I went to Twitter and then I was like asking, I was like, well, you know, I've already dropped it anyway. I could just buy one. But man, 70 bucks for two Joy-Con. I mean, I just that's not even worth it to me. No. I mean, I would like some different colors, but I'm not going to drop 70 bucks on it. You know, that's just it's a lot. It's a lot much. of money. Yeah. And I could get just the left replaced, but that's 50. So at that point. Why am I not just buying two anyway? So I think you're dumb just to buy one. Maybe you can get a deal on a refer, but it's still you're going to be dropping at least 35, probably 40 bucks. Yep. So uh, it, Twitter told me that you can use some sort of like um, electronics lubricant. It's basically like, like it's WD-40, but it's for electronics. And some people like swear by that. You just pry up the same spot, this little gasket where you'd spray the compressed air, but then you just um use that in there and that works but i was like you know what i'm gonna roll the dice and i got i just it it arrived today i haven't opened it yet i haven't tried to do it i got a little kit to replace the thumbstick so i'll take apart the joy con you have to you know disconnect the ribbon unmount it and put a new thumbstick in and reconnect it and reseal the joy con so hopefully i don't screw it up in the process but i mean i already had an amazon credit anyway it cost me like two bucks to buy this it's like fifteen dollars so worst case i'm out two dollars and then I just had to buy a new Joy-Con anyway, which I would have to done if I didn't try this. So I'm going to try to replace it myself, report back next week how that works. But otherwise, yeah, it, it's just it's stupid. I can play tabletop with my Pro Controller, um, but it's just kind of not that I – let's say I only use the Joy-Con when I, when I play handheld anyway, which is fine for some games. But for the most part, yeah, it's not a fun experience. Those Joy-Con, I, you, I've said it before, I don't like them. So there's no joy in these cons. So it took long enough to get to this point, but uh, yep, she she gone. So she done. I'm gonna have to replace that. And speaking of replacements, I've had just these always crappy headphones at work, and I got sick of especially the standing desk because it's like at the limit of the cord from my ear 
oh, to the PC yes, standing up. So I'm like, I want some wireless headphones. And then you were like, here, what are you looking for? And you recommended me a pair that your wife got. I thought I was buying the newer version of that. Wasn't quite the case because they're not noise canceling. But what are they? Uh, what's the name? Empow. Empow. <laughs> Empow. These are like just cheapo Bluetooth $35 headphones on Amazon. They got uh, 15 to 20 hour battery life. And honestly, I think they're more comfortable to wear than these. I mean, oh. these are these are bad. But I mean, those Empows, it's got that nice padded leather um, Head top piece like yours. Uh, it, they're comfortable. I mean, they don't sound, I mean, yeah, you get what you pay for, but I mean, they sound all right. And for the fact that the Bluetooth, I had to get a little $7 dongle that goes in the USB to transmit for my PC and they work great. I mean, I have probably like a 30 foot range on those. I mean, I've used them all today. I love it. It's got a, it has a built in mic. So it's got the volume. It's got a volume control and a, a hang up button. So I can like pause and resume my music just by pushing the button on the earpiece. I mean, uh, for 35 bucks, I'm pretty, pretty happy with the purchase. Kevin was asking nice. me about it because he wanted to pay for work too. And Kevin, um, I'm sure we might ch chat about this before you listen to this, but I think at this point, I'd say pull the trigger. You know, you're waiting for payday. I'd say do it, man. I mean, for what they are, I think they work great. I mean, uh, M Pow, baby. M Pow. My, my guess with those companies usually is the, the hardest part is quality control. That would be my guess is to where the corners are cut. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. But I feel like a lot of times, though, if you have an issue and you contact them, they'll take care of it. And you have yeah. Amazon's backing anyway. They're blessing. They say, go in peace. We'll, we'll send yeah. you another Yeah, one. like what happened, what happened when I got that tortilla press. They're like, nope, just keep it. We'll refund you. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. So, yeah, a little disappointed in the Joy-Con, but hopefully the fix comes out. I mean, luckily, you know, I can still play my Switch. It just has to be docked or, you know, tabletop. But, I mean... I'm surprised Donnie hasn't hit you up with like a here's some you know cheapo Joy Cons. Yeah. They uh, don't have HD Rumble, but they're uh, great. that's the thing. I wouldn't go cheapo on Joy Cons because they're bad enough an experience with the official ones. Can you imagine going knockoffs in <laughs> no, that department? I don't want to. I mean, no. So uh, I don't think uh, I don't think I'll get, I'll get around to try to fix them tonight. But we got uh, Steam World Quest comes out tomorrow, which I pre-purchased. Got to use the rest of my gaming credit and have that so i'll look forward to play that but i can't do it right now because those those joy cons aren't gonna work and because you're so. doing a podcast and because i'm doing a podcast how long have we been doing this podcast anyway um four five years now no i meant just uh, this uh, our, our <laughs> actual run time right i know now. we're at about 50 minutes oh perfect well, probably well, then 45 this is a perfect time to step back and say hey let's do an overclock remix break we're not even gonna just you know, we need a new filler. Let's do some OC remix to break up the show. Reminder, we have Flexibles Radio coming to you at the end of the month. Our theme this uh, month is Gotta Go Fast. So Lucas and I will be painstakingly curating that, curating that in the coming, coming days to get you some hot tunes. Patrons, you get early access. The rest of you has got to wait. Oh, my God. I hope we get number two. So we like to feature a random remix from Overclock Remix, OCRemix.org, a great Great music community that I've been privy to uh, lurking around for many, many years. I've heard, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff in there. A lot of good stuff. Joshua Morse, Disco Dan. Who's, uh, oh gosh, who's the similar name to Disco Dan? Who's the other one that we really like that I can't remember? Oh, what the hell is his name? Maze Dude? Can't. Maze Dude, yes. Oh, that's the one. <laughs> that's not yes. even like Disco Dan at all. I know, but I just, it, it just, I don't know. It just resonated. So we like to feature a random remix from the front page every week. Lucas, what do we got tonight? Can I spin that wheel? Spin that wheel. Spin the horror. Stay a while. Listen. To the saucy remix. It's definitely not number two. That's for sure. It's number 25. It's from Chrono Cross. <laughs> God, it might be. Wait for it, people. 14, 15. Oh my god, it is Chrono Cross, and it's I'm pretty sure it's one we played. Rerolling. Okay. Re -roll. Re -roll. Let's go Hollow Knight. I'm rerolling my character as we speak. <gasps> oh we were one away. We could have been there. We could have been there. If it's there. Secret of Mana, we can't play that either because we've had way too many <gasps> secrets. It's of Journey Mana. to Silas. Silius. Silius by Sir Nuts. Whoa, Sir Nuts is uh he's got two on here. 
He released two songs. Whoa, well, you're lucky it wasn't number four because the name of that. Partons à la Oh, what the hell? What the hell is this game? What is this? Uh, isn't it a space shooter? I believe it's a space shooter. Uh, Journey to Silas. Silly, yes, I've never heard of that. Interesting. All right, Lucas says uh, he's intro as well. Our game tonight is Journey. Our remix tonight is 0373. It's from Journey to Silius. It's by Sir underscore Nuts. This is rearranging the music of one song, stage four, aptly named. Let's learn a little bit more about Journey to Silius. It was released in 1990 on the Nintendo Entertainment System by Sunsoft. Ooh, uh, this, Sunsoft. Uh, this in the according to the. Uh, game database on OC Remix. This is a action platformer. So mm. <laughs> take that for what you will. I am not familiar with this game at all. Uh, EDM, rock, energetic, chip tune. Five minutes. So one of our little longer ones, but it's right there. If it's energetic, that'll be an enjoyable five minutes. I have a very strong, convicting feeling. Um, about I have a problem. <laughs> What's that? Uh, I think I'm out of storage on my <laughs> Google Drive. <laughs> so now i got to figure out how to get this. It says uh, not enough s- storage space to... Doesn't that always just by default save it to our, our shared drive? Yeah, not enough storage quota to upload, upgrade storage. Yeah, I'm That's using 21.9 gigabytes of 15 gigabytes. Oh, God. See, I'm only at 8.8 8 out of 15. Well, I have a few more. I, well, I have. I wonder if it's because of the stuff that I put in there. I go through and usually delete old remixes out, try to, to make room. Oof. Well, Oof. there, folks. We've got some Oof. good podcasts here. Here, what? I, I can still play it from the PC. You'll just have to mute your. Your you'll have to mute your mic. So. <laughs> okay, that's fine. We'll do that then. We'll just play it here, so we can get through it. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna play this remix right now. You can find this and so much more at OCRemix.org. I'm going to mute myself. We're going to step away. We're going to play this remix. And we'll come back for some more podcast. Yeah!
I love when they give you the, like the slow outro drum. <laughs> you know what I like. I know that was all sure mix. Thank you for sticking things out. We're back. We're back. Let's do some more flex balls. Let's do some what you plan. Oh. A sleepy time. That's not what I was expecting because you were talking about Sunset Riders in pre-show, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> Yahoo! It's coming." You said, "Oh no, actually, you." Well, I play that one a lot, and then I play. You said I play uh, Streets of Rage too much, too. Yeah, so I said. I mean, you, 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 there is some heavy favoritism yeah, going on. It's like it's the Metallica of radio stations. They just play it. Pretty much all the time. That's my James Hetfield. I like, I like it. it. I thought you were going to give me some fuel and some fire and that which I Give me a five. Give me a Nobody's really watching now. What's please done? Uh, Lucas, I. Uh, Man, my my wife and I are my wife. Oh, we're on a you. we're on a tear through atypical. I think it's a great show. Oh, oh good, I think, good. I think you're doing yourself a disservice <laughs> by not continuing to watch it. We finished season one. We're halfway. We're like three quarters of the way through season two. It's just there's season a lot of um, each episode leaves you on like these emotional notes. You're like, what is going to happen? I need to see what happens to these characters. I want to know more, and we just keep going. That's how I feel about The Bachelor. And yet you say you won't watch that, so. No, I won't. Will I will you not be watch my bachelor? The bachelor. I will not watch This Is Us. Will you be and my bachelor? I feel totally okay <laughs> not are, watching either of those things. Isn't This Is Us a completely different style of show other than an emotional hook to get people to watch? Uh, I mean, yeah, they're not like a, a, a drama, you know, they're not, drama and it's mama. not, uh, it's not a, we're, we like to say uh, reality television program yeah so no atypical it's fantastic i'm kind of interested uh if skinny matt has watched it some um because that 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 he can personally relate to the to the content of the show so i'm kind of curious but it's really good it's really good i can't say enough good things about it lucas what three i think this is three years in the making yes has really been that today finished it before the show i have finally watched ant-man wow my copy of Ant Man, by the Your way. Your copy of Ant Man. You'd let me borrow it on Blu ray forever ago, and I have finally watched it. I'm Started never, it last night, I'm finished never, it today. I'm never going to let you borrow anything ever. <laughs> I think Jess saw about three quarters of it because she wasn't home when I started it, and she really liked it too. And you know what? Oh, I, wow. I, I skipped it in the theater because I thought, you know, he's running around with ants. And I'm like, this looks kind of dumb. But you know what? I really, I did, I really enjoyed it. I didn't think it was that bad. It, yeah, I think it's the, good. the the story is the biggest problem. It just has like the typical Marvel. It's just story. like a tip, it's like a typical heist with the Marvel in there, you know. But I, I liked I liked the characters of Hank. I liked Hank Pym. I like Scott Lang. I like Ho- I liked all the characters in there. Well, if you like um, this one, you'll like Ant Man vs. the Wasp. Well, well, that was the thing. I was like, I kind of, I was like, I I need to finally watch this so I can watch Ant Man and the Wasp. That was the whole yeah. point. And I was just joking around on disc on Discord. I was like, you know, I think I'm gonna watch Ant Man this week so I can try to watch Ant Man and the Wasp as well. So I'm I'm one for one. Wow. I've Gotta go one. For, try to go for two for two. That's uh... and then I I'm trying to figure out somehow to like go see Captain Marvel as well wait until it's five dollars at the cheap day. well here's what i've read i read this online and people you other mcu crazies can probably confirm or deny this that both of those stories are very much standalones however the end credit scenes do have some weight to what's going on with maybe a possible resolution to this whole thanos problem so yeah there's ways I could easily watch those online, but I, you know, I know, let's say, I know enough about Carol Danvers and cat and Captain Marvel that I'm familiar enough with that character. I can watch Ant-Man and the Wasp easily enough because it's on Netflix. So, but I do want to try to watch them before I see Endgame. I watched, I watched Captain Marvel actually, and I don't have it on my, what you playing? Cause I still, what, what am I going to say? I don't want to spoil it. So it's like, um, 
I think the thing that you'd be missing out on the most is her relationship with Nick Fury. Because that's basically what the movie is about. I, I just want to see that sexy young Sam Jackson CGI in the mm. works. You know? He looks good. Real good. It's impressive. I mean, I just got to see young Michael Douglas, so now I want some young Sam Jackson. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think if you could make it work, it'd be worth it. I didn't think... I, I will just say this. I didn't think it was the most... Like, the best Marvel movie I ever saw, but I'd give it a, a B. You know, B. Well, all that said, I'm I'm surprised how much I ended up liking Ant Man because I thought for a while I thought it had you know for what I my impressions before watching it were always like it's got some slack stick, slapstick moments, but it's much like C tier MCU. Yeah. But I I don't know I just I had fun with it. I mean I like that Good. better than I mean it's better than the Thor movies. That is definitely true, especially two and three. Well, well I think the I still I, I still have two. I've never even watched um, Dark World yet. I never saw that. But that's I the feel second like the, one. I never need to go back to it. That's the second one. Yeah, that's the worst watched, one, dude. You only yeah. need to watch one, and that's number three. Ragnarok. Yeah, which I've watched. Yeah, that's the so, only one that really matters. I'm pretty sure I rented Ragnarok, so that's how I finally watched it. But uh, yeah, Ant Man I liked, and my featured piece of content tonight, Katana Zero, came out last week on the Nintendo Switch. It is a 2D uh, platformer published by uh, Devolver Digital. This is very much as once we saw in the trailers, people dubbed it a Jason game because it hits the requirements. Some difficult 2D platforming slash combat, a synth soundtrack, and some 80s neon. Yep, you guessed <laughs> it. It pretty much nails all that thing. You play a character like your your former soldier suffers from that was injured during this war. You have uh, personality disorders, memory issues, and now you're basically a uh what do i want to say you're not like a hitman you're basically like a an assassin uh, an assassin but also like a oh gosh what's the word i'm looking for um not assassin uh hmm. uh okay whatever i mean you're basically a soldier for a soldier of fortune almost mercenary you know yeah that's that's a good word that's let's go with that you're okay yeah almost. so yeah because you would assume you work for the highest bidder is what you're saying. Yeah, essentially. But I mean, you always work for the same company that, you know, gives you these, you, you be like the game is very interesting. You, you do a mission, you have a contract to take out and then you meet with your, um, your, what appears to be like your doctor have like this psych psychiatrist, like this little psychiatric evaluation. Yeah. Like a session. And then he gives you your medicine, your injection, and then off you go again, you get a new oh, contract, a new con- medicine. <laughs> contract and off you go. The combat is where this game like excels. You have um, some basic attacks, like it's very fast paced and frantic. One hit, you you'll die. But you know you have a basic katana attack, a slash, or like a jumping slash, and then you also have the ability to like pick up objects in the environment and throw them, which kill enemies in stylized fashion. And so like each style. each level yeah. is like each room is one screen, and you have a time limit to get through it, and you have to you have like a bullet time ability that slows things down, which allows you to uh, re- reflect bullets with your katana or do some just cool you know kills in that that way. And if you die, the game like each level you know you walk in and, and your your character gets out a cassette tape and starts playing, and it says the name of the track and the music that's playing. And then it's like you're watching a VHS tape of what's going on. So when you die, the tape rewinds automatically mm-hmm. and you play the section <clears> over again. And then once you beat that screen, you actually get to see the replay of your progress. That's so, cool. Um, it was a really fun game. And like the story is really cool. And it, and it has some interesting ways like the your text is like you have a as text is being read to you, you can immediately interrupt that text with usually a, a asshole response or you can let that text play out and then you have options you can choose from i don't think any of your responses change the story at all it just gives you different responses from some of the different characters you encounter but i think your end point is the same no matter what i don't think there's any branching paths there hmm. but it, it does make for some alternate ways to kind of play through some scenarios and i, I will say the game was i i feel like for me it probably took three hours to get through so it's not that long like the levels aren't that long um 
but it, the story does some interesting things and there's some depth to your character and some different things going on that you wouldn't expect some different things going on with your employer that all play out in this, in this kind of sounds um, like shadow run a little or, bit, a little bit in a way, but I mean, for 15 bucks, I don't feel like I was cheated. I think this would be a game I would possibly replay. There are some unlocks, like some weapons that I can get that I haven't done yet that require you to find like key cards that are hidden in throughout levels. So all in all, I'm, I'm very happy with the game. I enjoyed it. It wasn't, I don't think it's as hard as people thought it would be from like the reveal trailers. I don't think it's harder than the messenger. It's definitely not harder than hollow Knight, you know, Okay. because this is just, there's no, you know, there's not any like platforming. It's just, you know, some difficult combat. And sometimes your tasks, like your employer will want you to like not kill, like do not no excessive casualties, you know, do not kill anyone. And you can, you can choose to ignore that and you can just kill people, but then he's just going to be pissed at you, you know? So, <laughs> so there's boss. some, there's some mild stealth elements too. I think, mean, I think I, I said to you that the game kind of reminds me sometimes it plays very similar to like Mark of the Ninja, mm-hmm. not definitely not as stealth heavy as that game was where, you know, you're not, can't, you can't hide a corpse and do other things of, of that nature, but I don't know. It was still a really fun game and I, I enjoyed it. So, I mean, um, I think for 15 bucks, it's a fairly low entry game. And I think people should, uh, if you're interested, I think you should check it out. And that's all my stuff. I, wa- I want to check out that game. But like I said, I'll probably buy it when it's like four ninety nine or something. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I watched a couple movies. I'll try to go through them quickly. 12 Monkeys. You, I, have you seen this movie? 12 Monkeys came out in 95. Uh, yeah, I have. Bruce Willis. And then I couldn't remember if I... Like I can't remember, I can't remember what the ending's like to that movie. And I remember I started okay. rewatching it. So it's Bruce Willis. He Spoilers. is from the future. He's from the future, <laughs> yes. right? He time yeah. travels to the past, and there's like this whole apocalypse that he's trying to prevent. Right. He's trying to find the the army of the twelve monkeys. It was Brad Pitt's in this, right? Yes. And what happened is, well, what you start off knowing is that there is a. Uh, virus that was released that basically caused everyone to go underground and the world is taken back over by the animals because they're not affected by the virus just humanity is so he goes back in time to try and he is sent back in time he is uh, they have sent plenty of people back in time uh, from the future they're they're um, they're called uh, people who volunteer they're called volunteers but they don't they didn't really volunteer. Did you? I, I'm sure I don't know the answer to this. Did you ever watch? There was a TV series. They adapt this to as well, and I'm not sure oh, how that plays out. No. It's if it's how that com, like what is, is its connection to the film? Okay, yeah, I don't. I haven't watched it. Uh, I didn't even know that actually. Uh, I think it was on Sci-Fi. That would make sense. Uh, so he goes back in time, but he's sent to the wrong time, and then he has to go back and then sent back again. The problem is it's hard to keep your wits about you when you're sent back in time this way because you're constantly told that you're crazy and you feel crazy because you think you're mm. from the future, but you're also living in the present. So it's hard to convince people and all this stuff it's just the way that you're forced back in time it's just a different it's not like stepping in a time machine and going back in time and then remembering all the things that you remember from before it messes with your mind and uh so he he finds out basically he thinks that he created it at one point he finds out the 12 monkeys aren't really they're just a bunch of kids who are trying to free uh animals that have been are being experimented on and what actually happened is one of the places that they release animals from a scientist works there and he's the one who releases it. And he keeps seeing Bruce Willis keeps seeing this flashback where he's in an airport and there's this kid and he sees this guy get uh, shot and he doesn't know. This, he doesn't this, understand this guy, this guy, he, gets shot. he doesn't understand wow. Uh, who this is or what's going on, but he's this kid and he realizes at the end that he is the kid. He, he lived in this time period as a child and he saw himself get shot by the airport uh, security mm. um, because they were trying to get to him what before he paradox. got to the gate. The, yeah. Before he got to the person who was actually carrying the virus. So, yeah, 
It was now. I will say this: this is a Terry Gilliam movie. This is why what? I wanted to watch it. Have you watched this prior, or you just? I knew of it back when it first kind of came out, but yeah. I was too young. I remember. I, I remember that, people like, saying, "As a mature, understanding adult, I yeah. hadn't experienced this film." I remember people saying, "I'm ready to review it. for True Myth Media." Actually, oh god, no, I'm not. Not for this one. I remember people saying they saw it and don't. They were like, "What the hell did I just watch?" And I could see that, but I will say this. It's an imaginative, imaginative and uh, interesting film, but my God, the music that Terry Gilliam chooses to use in most of his movies does not hold up well. I hate the music in this. It's it's a lot of accordion and just weird, like piano going, dum, 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 dum. yeah, dum, 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 dum. and then weird snare like drums, like a cat running across the keys, dum, 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 dum. A, a little bit, and then there's like snare drums going. And stuff, and I just I don't ugh, I didn't like mm. it, I didn't like it. So, but everything else I liked. Uh, then I watched this movie called The Lure. Now, see, the reason why I watched these was because I've had them sitting around like, from is Netflix. Is that like Spanish flea? No, this is a <laughs> nothing like that at all. This is a, a Polish movie actually that Mike told me to watch, and he didn't say much about it. He just told me what it was about what it was about. Spoilers, because nobody's going to watch this movie. Jan Levan. It's a Polish movie that is apparently slightly a horror monster film, but also a musical. (laughs) And not in an ironic, funny way. It takes itself very seriously. So it's it's about these mermaids that trick people into taking care of them recent too 2017. yeah 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 yep and so they are taken to this they she they find these people who work at a nightclub and they're taken there to work and these people people are it's no secret that they're mermaids it's very weird it's 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 got to be a cultural thing uh mistranslation or something because I'm I'm not quite understanding what's going on. But people know they're mermaids, but nobody seems freaked out by that. I don't know. Maybe it's part of their charm. Uh but they're okay. sirens. You know, they sing songs and they lure people into liking them and doing things for them. But they also eat people. And that's part of the problem. They they have to feed on human flesh. Can they walk on do they have legs sometimes too? Yes, but they do not they're Barbie dolls. Uh, they, they do have breasts, but they're Barbie dolls from the waist down. It's part of the illusion. So the problem here is that sh- one of the two sisters, uh, mermaid sisters, falls in love with the guy that the younger guy that they trick into taking care of them. Mm-hmm. And if she falls in love and this guy were to not marry her and marry someone else, she turns into sea foam and disappears and dies. <laughs> I know it's very weird. It's very weird. So that obviously is what happens. And uh, she ends up sacrificing herself instead of killing this guy. That's the only way to keep that from happening. I'm surprised at the amount of nudity I'm getting just by searching this oh, yeah. film on Google. Oh images. yeah. They're nude pretty much 50% of the time. There's not a lot there's of sex also, stuff. There's also, there's... I got an image of the critter from critters. That's weird and random. Uh, there's not a lot of sex or any weird stuff. They're just randomly standing around topless a lot. Uh, I didn't really care for the movie, though. Uh, it, I don't know. I thought the setup seemed interesting and it seemed creative and in, in, in obviously nothing I've seen before. But I don't know. It just didn't really do it for me. So And it's a musical. I mean, that's the I got to remember that angle as well. It's a musical, it, uh, but in the sense uh, that they sing like rock songs and stuff. Is it so subtitled or yeah 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 so what's it like watching a subtitled musical uh it's like watching rammstein with the subtitles <laughs> turned down <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly also polish no. is a very ugly sounding language i'm sorry i don't I have well, nothing against I polish people you, but you're you're lazy Overweight American sounds ugly. That's probably true. But when you listen to music saying in Polish, it uh, 
Bratislava. It doesn't, it doesn't flow very well. It's like that one. It's like the. Uh, it's like the radio station from Grand Theft Auto 4 that only played Russian music or whatever. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that was the Ooh, lure. Yeah, yeah. It was okay. It was interesting, but I, and I, I made it all the way through, but I wouldn't recommend anybody else watch it. Uh, lastly, Firewatch. I started Firewatch, the walking simulator, where you go out and you do a bit of story. And uh, I want to play this You look here. at Firewatch. It's good. Uh, it's good in a story sense. And there's things to do. You don't just walk around. It's not like um, Esther, Dear Esther, where you just walk continually and not actually interact with anything, and you just keep walking forever, and then the story's done. Uh, it's it's good. I, I haven't finished it yet, so I'm going to hold off on talking about it, but I'm enjoying it, and I will continue to play it. I, I've started Humble it. Bundle? I think so, actually. I don't remember. <laughs> Uh, I think I remember wanting to buy it, and then I got it through Humble Bundle, and I was like, "Oh, that's why I don't buy games because." I mean, let's face it. I will, I would play it on Switch, but I don't want to pay full price to play it on Switch. That's true. So. It's not. I mean, you could probably play it on your computer just fine. I don't. Yeah, think I probably I could probably get a a decent. Um, I'm sure it goes on sale. I mean, it's yeah. been out long enough. The only problem from a performance perspective is that it's a lot of outdoors forest stuff so there's a lot of shadows and grass going on and uh if you don't turn down the settings it can be a little little uh little much uh speaking of not buying games i freaking pre-ordered a game can you believe it i pre-ordered this and i i hemmed and i hawed about it and i waited until the very last minute but i said you know what for once i'm going to pre-order a game because i have a lasting relationship and and fondness of this game in this series and that's mortal Kombat. in that what yeah and that reboot and i know i don't really talk about it that much but that's just because mortal Kombat's kind of always been the uh redheaded stepchild of the fighting game world people don't really consider it to be an actual competitive fighting game it's not held in the same regards as street fighter correct yeah or i mean i guess street fighter is now the most it's probably the the biggest like maybe internationally Fighter. played professional fighting game, I guess now. Yeah. I mean, Tekken too, to a certain degree, uh, that you, cause it, well, it had a lot of arcade, uh, prominence along with street fighter, whereas mortal Kombat was in the arcades, but I don't think a lot of people were, I don't know. Yeah. It's weird. It, it never rose to that prominence, but yeah. You know, ever since nine kind of rebooted the whole series, it's been really good and uh, it only gets better and I won't go too much into it. I've only played the story mode, but damn, like it's it's really getting to the point where it's practically a movie and then you just play the fight scenes that happen in between uh, as far as just the story mode. The the move the actual story itself is pretty damn cool. Uh, I I won't talk too much about it because otherwise, what's the point of playing it? But uh, I don't know. Like the production value is really good. The fighting is really good. Um, feels really good, and obviously that you want it to. Do the the like the fatal moves? Or does that get old at all? Like the slow mo, like seeing bones break. And... Well, the thing about the fatal moves is they're not the x-rays because the x-rays okay. you could use at any time, uh, but you can only use it once per two, two rounds or whatever. Uh, similarly to the, uh, uh, what'd you just call them? What are they? Uh, fatal. I call them fatal, fatal blows. Moves, yeah. Fatal there. blows. So you can only use fatal blows if your health is below 30%. Okay. And you can only use it once. So once you achieve like once you get the fatal blow unlocked at 30% health, it'll carry over to the next one if you mm. don't use it. But if you use it on the first round, then it's not just, you know, you might finish that round and win, but then your other, the person you're going up against still has one too. And you yeah. can't use one now. So it could does, turn. Does it your doesn't necessarily like turn your opponent the doesn't die just because you used a fatal. No, no, blow no, 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 no. See, that's the only thing that's like a little bit. Well, I understand from a balancing standpoint, it has to be in there. But when I see like my hand like punch through somebody's heart, <laughs> yeah. I expect the round to be over. <laughs> yeah. Know? Well, I mean, one of them, I think it's from Frost, which is a disciple of Sub Zero. So she has ice powers. 
and she makes this spiky, crazy uh, ice uh, statue type thing. And she breaks your face through all of this and stabs your head into like these spikes. <laughs> and yeah, it, it's over the top because obviously how would you walk away from that? But once you yeah. get used to it, uh, you just kind of, it, that's just how it is. Uh, there's, I mean, there's other similar moves like that. So the violence level is very high here. Uh, over the top. I mean, for sure there, there are moves that just go, go balls to the wall. Uh, but it's what I, what I like about this. And I actually watched a video about this is that they kind of went in a different direction with mortal Kombat. If you look at a comparison from mortal Kombat X to mortal Kombat 11, you'll see a slight, a very slight shift in the tone and the character design of the game. Uh, the backgrounds are a little bit more uh, in the background. It makes the characters easier to see and recognize. So from a visual standpoint, it just looks better because the characters actually pop off the background. Uh, the character designs themselves are slightly less chunky and kind of stylized and a little bit more what you expect from like injustice. And I think injustice has a lot to do with this. So when injustice yeah. two came out and you see Harley Quinn and her face is moving and like, she's chewing bubble gum and blowing a bubble and talking. It looks uncanny Valley almost because it's so mm. realistic. They went with that model here as well. Uh, so people look very realistic. They don't look stylized in comic book like, like they do in Mortal Kombat X. So a little bit of a, a shift, but it's working, man. It looks really good. The facial animation is amazing. There are very oh, wow. subtle in the movie in the movies that play. There are very subtle emotions that can come across from their from their faces. And it just it's very gives it a lot of weight that you don't normally get from a fighting game. I It's ridiculous to say that I'm playing a fighting game for its story, but that's exactly what I'm doing here. And I like what the direction that they're going in. I like that they've added in a customization aspect where you can customize parts of your character based on what you equip on them. So you can equip different actual uh, pieces of armor or weapons or, you know, depending on what, on what character you're using. And it will augment that person in whatever way that whatever you've equipped does. So... Uh, they're they're kind of taking it one step farther and uh, expanding on the formula a little bit, I guess. Okay. None of it seems hokey. Uh, <sighs> I haven't gone too much into it. That's why I can't really explain it better because you have to unlock stuff. So, for instance, Johnny Cage, he wears sunglasses a lot. Well, you can equip different types of sunglasses that look different and they do different things They and they unlock different abilities or or whatever can, do, can he can he still do his uh crotch punch i haven't played at him as him yet so <sighs> i don't know but yeah the story is really good and what i've realized what i like about mortal Kombat is and i said this in the discord it's like the saturday morning cartoons of of violent fighting video games it's ridiculous but it takes itself just seriously enough that you feel like you're you're doing something you're watching something that's not just throwaway, but it also doesn't take itself too seriously that it's boring. It's like the it's like the Marvel version of a of a super violent fighting game. You know, they, they've <laughs> struck that balance and they did it well. OK, I think so. I'm having a good time with it. I've I've completed about two chapters. So I did uh, Cassie Cage. And then I did uh, Sassy Cassie, Sassy Cassie, Kung Lao and Liu Kang. And then uh, I'm now on Scorpion and Sub-Zero. So the whole the whole point of this game was that they reset time. So now like Scorpion and Sub-Zero aren't again, aren't against each other yet. Mm. Anything like that. Okay. So time has been reset to a certain are are uh, Sector and Cyrax. Are they still in Mortal Kombat games? I don't know if they're playable, but they are part of the story. Ooh, because uh, I have just run across them just now. So they're at the part where they have switched over and become Cyrax and Sector. They're 
their human counterparts and their cybernetic counterparts are existing in the same time frame. So it's all very strange. But there's a really good reason. Hmm. Okay. Actually, I can say it's the big bad. The big bad is named – oh, God, I can't remember her name. But she has the power to um, affect the flow of time. Ah. So she has reset – time basically who is the, uh, the character that was looked like elvira but she could scream is that sindel that's that Sindel. Her yeah i'm surprised i remember most of this character she mortal was Kombat like, three was the last mortal Kombat i really that's played. where a lot of them were uh she was the queen of outworld or whatever mm. yeah she was shao khan's bride or whatever and goro's in there right katana's or mom, goro goro not goro excuse goro's me. dead i think i don't know <gasps> He's they I, killed Goro? I don't know from a story perspective, but I know there's a level where his skeleton is in the background. Wow. So I'm not but quite is, sure. Is Kentaro still a thing? I don't know what happened with that because it was like a like a he weird was like centaur thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what no, no, wait. Kentaro was the centaur. What was the other Goro There was like one that was like a tiger, but Yeah. That may have been Kentaro. And I might There's be thinking... Motaro and Kentaro. Okay, so Mutaro so, was the was the Kentaro is the tiger. He's like a Goro, but he's a tiger. And then Mutaro is the yeah, centaur and Mutaro guy. is the cyborg. I mean the he's the uh, centaur. You guys Which are you can, a a you can land him in Mortal Kombat three, if I remember right. Well, see, I think they trimmed out some of the stup- more stupid ideas that they've had God, in the Shiva. I forgot. Oh, there's a lot of stuff I forgot. Oh about yeah, this Shiva. Game. Yeah, she was a biatch. Another Goro esque character. I can't yeah. remember what they're called. Um, Moblins. <laughs> Oblin and goblins. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. It's really good, and I enjoy playing the story mode. I haven't done anything else really. What you bought a game and you're having fun playing it? This is not. True. I, okay. I know. This I know. Is not. I know. But you know, I I blame Josh because he shared that damn trailer, and it was just so Josh freaking has been awesome. All about this game. I mean, well, and that's the thing is. Drum. Combat. I told him, I said, it's easy to ignore a game when nobody else is talking about it. And typically nobody really cared about Mortal Kombat as, as much as I did. So I didn't really talk about it, but I've had it yeah. since childhood. And, you know, I kind of gave it up when it got really stupid and Mortal Kombat 4 came around and then like Apocalypse and all that stuff. They tried yeah. some other stuff with it, but then 9 came around and I was like, I took notice again. I was like, damn, this is good. Your Your traditional, like, 2d fighters i just never never got the hang of too much like i i played a lot of street fighter 2 back in the day but i mean like tech end was where like that was the first fighting game that I actually like put some time into you know and, and smash is a different thing all, all its own but just like t- your standard fighting games i just never i don't know why i feel i think for me like the the disconnect for was i always felt like i have to sit there and learn these combos if i ever want to be you know, I, yeah, I don't do that. I mean, I will discover certain things that work, but for the most part, it's about 60% button mashing right now for me. Mm. So don't, I mean, don't feel too bad, but there are times I will say that I get more, I get better at like the combo system than I do with smashes. Um, I don't want to say there's not combos, but the way that there's like with tilt attacks and, how you have to mm. press a different direction for each each thing. Yeah, I don't do well with that, but I can hit buttons. I, I take that back. I did play a lot of Dead or Alive on Xbox. Yeah, we did. We did. I did. I got pretty good at that game, but then Andy came over and kicked my Dude, ass. Andy yeah. was. That's what I was just saying about Andy was so good. He would master the counter. I mean, you couldn't land a hit because he would just counter you all the time. It's yeah. so frustrating. He was very frustrating to play against. What can you good do? Good times. But I'm not much of a competitive uh, player anyway. That's why I told Josh was thinking about getting it on PC. And I was like, I don't know how much I'll play online anyways. Honestly, I'll try it, but it's not my, if I'm going to play something online, I'll play division or destiny mm. or any of the multitude of games that something we have. with a progression and a co-op. Mechanic yeah. Or... I don't, I don't do well getting online and getting my ass handed to me by a 12 year old. You know, I don't. Yeah. I I wanna, I'd rather boot the computer on easy mode. <laughs> Don't hurt me, Daddy. <laughs> exactly. 
So yeah, that's that's what I've been playing. Oh, and I beat uh, Mutant Year Zero. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I did beat it. So beat nice. it. Don't you want to be defeated? I love that game. Sorry. You know what? I should say I love Mutant Year Zero. It's great. Wow. Wow. It's really good. I want to get like a shirt or maybe some fake amiibo statuettes. Some mini figs. Yeah, mini figs, something. Because I didn't know this. Tabletop role role playing game. That's where that the basis of this came from. Apparently, wow. it's really big in Sweden. Is uh, Mut- Mutant Year Zero, which is what it's called. Road to Eden is what the, they named the what video game. game. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's a really big. Uh, uh, popular series overseas i guess so wow. i didn't know that either i had no the clue, more you know but i the love more it you know. the more you know all right all right well let's let's do some around the web and get out of here i'm glad you liked uh mutant league hockey road zero <laughs> eden worst name edition. ever uh i got one story we're gonna share tonight it comes from mr callow he shared it on discord because it, it's very in line with the easter holiday the festivus of easter that happened last week and it should be no surprise from Fox News, Florida person yes. in an Easter Bunny costume captured brawling on video. Uh, the Florida, the Easter Bunny was hopping mad Sunday night and ended up in a three-person yeah. brawl in Florida. Video post on Instagram shows a person dressed as a white bunny running toward two people who are already wrestling each other on the sidewalk in downtown Orlando and joins the fight. Costume character appeared, appeared to begin showing punches approaches. after initially trying to pull the two men apart. Oh, God. Ooh, a little autoplay. Yeah, while well, I'm watching the video, apparently. So there's a bunch of vicious body blows. Body blow, body blow, body blow. And there's some fighting, and then uh, there's some people, cops intervene. Apparently, the initial brawl began when a man bumped into a woman. It's unclear why the Easter Bunny jumped in or who was underneath the costume. So, <laughs> Can, I, can um, I just say, when a man bumps into a woman... There's going to be an Easter Bunny going to throw down. You got to kick everybody's ass. <laughs> now you want to be. Yeah. Well, so, unfortunately. That's what around the web is for. That's, uh, that's really stupid. Uh, you know, people bump into people all the time and they don't get in fights. And they certainly don't need the Easter Bunny to take time out of his day. Or her. Or her. Or her. I don't know. Yeah. I don't Thank know the physiology of I mean, rabbits. Don't assume the gender. Of the bunny. Right. I mean. And now do he or her, him or her has to lay down the law. It's clobbering I mean, time. I like it. That bunny's got eggs to hide. Yeah. I mean. Now what she, you going to do? Now making omelets because you got some eggs <laughs> to crack. <laughs> crack and lack on the sidewalks well, of the life. Speaking of cracking, let's crack out of here. That doesn't make sense. But this show is done. Thank you. To all of our patrons, but a special thanks to our arbiters of awesomeness, Josh Brown, Kevin Austin, Kyle Heyman, Tyler Rowland, Tom Servo, Donnie Reese, Man Knight, our executors of excellence, Dude 427, Edwin Callow, and Bow. That's right, Bow before the Crusaders of the Legion, Josh Barboni, Dan Anthony, and Devin Tyus. If you want to join the Flux Aww. Legion on Patreon, check out patreon.com slash flexibos. Please, please check the show notes of this episode to get you entered in the giveaway that we will announce the winner next week. And if you're on PC, you want the, the, those points for apex, you know what to do. You know what to do. So with that, we are done. Lucas, let's put a bow in the, sh- let's put a bow in, in the show. The show. Mm-hmm. And we'll be done. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. As always, we are done. Goodbye. Yes. Yes. Yoda. Done we are. <laughs> Sean, Sean wanted. He got. Yes. Ask and, and you shall receive. And, and I'm sorry, demon, that you joined as we ended. I'm sorry. Oh. Maybe next week. Oh, goodbye. Follow Bye. us. Follow. Follow We're us. We're huge in Japan. Yes. Bye. <laughs>